This is chapter 26, number 53, and this is all about a copy machine. And it says a copier uses a lens to place an image of a document onto a rotating drum. So what we've got here uh, is we need a real image, okay, because we're going to have whatever we're being copied and then some lens in the middle. And the light's going to go through the lens and then hit the drum. And on that drum, we need light to converge so we can actually get an image and then, you know, make our copies. Uh, and then if you want to get into the uh, how it does the stuff with the ink, that's electrostatics. That's back in, I believe, chapter 18. So lots of stuff about copiers. Uh, part A, what kind of lens should be used if we want to make this happen? Well, I already mentioned we need a real image. So if we need a real image, we need a converging lens. Because if we have a diverging lens, um, light will never come to a point. It'll spread out and diverge, and, and you won't be able to make a copy. So it's got to be a converging lens, and I know for a fact uh, without even doing anything yet, that it'll have to be outside the focal for that to happen. Because if we're inside the focal, even if we have a converging le converging lens, it's just like a concave mirror. If we're inside the focal, the image will be virtual, and then it won't work. So we've got to be outside of F. Where exactly depends on what's going on in the problem. So they tell us, uh, so I've got the part A done, converging so that we get a real image. Part B says... Uh, how far from the document is the lens located? And see how far from the lens is the image located if the document and its copy are have the same size but are inverted with respect to one another. So what that tells me, if they're going to be the same size but upside down, is that our magnification will be negative 1. Um, and I don't have anything drawn here yet because I'm not sure on where everything's going to be. But there's my Fs and my two Fs on both sides where the real focal, if this is the lens, and the object's over here somewhere, the real focal's over here. This is just for reference purposes. Uh, and then our two Fs as well. So we need M to be equal to negative 1. And if I look at my equation, M equals negative DI over DO. DI over DO. So talking about the size of these, they have to be the same. DI has to equal DO. If we're going to get 1 here, DI and DO have to have the same value. Now, what about the negative stuff? Well, uh, I have a, I know I'm going to have a real image, so when I plug in DI, it'll be a positive number. When I plug in DO, it's always a positive number. And then we have the negative out front, so it works. So I don't, I don't know that I really need the absolute value here, uh, because these are both going to be positive values anyway. For this setup, they're both going to be positive values, and I've got my M equals negative 1. So DI equals DO. That makes our equation pretty simple once we realize that. Realizing that is the uh, figuring that out is the tricky part. So I'm just going to place one of these with the other. So I'll just make this di because they're interchangeable. So I'll have one over f equals two over di, or yeah, that's right. Or di equals two f. And now I don't remember what we we're trying to figure out. So let me go back to the original question. Uh, how far from the document is the lens located, and how far from the lens is the image located? So this tells us the image location, location, and this might be a little redundant. Uh-oh. All right, this will be entertaining. I'm out of ink. I'm going to go find a pen. Welcome to room 330. Uh, let's see here. Should be one over here somewhere. Let's see if this works. There's some right hands. There's a right hand rule. Yep, that works. All right, back to the problem here. So we figured out that the, the DI is at 2F, so I know I'm going to get something upside down here at 2F. Now the question is, where is the object? Well, I could actually ray trace now and see the symmetry. I know what's going to happen. But let's resolve just in case you're not seeing what's going to happen here. So 1 over di again, plus 1 over do. And these are interchangeable because the magnification is negative 1. So this time, instead of getting rid of do, I'll get rid of di. So I just make this a do, just straight substitution because di equals do. So we do the same thing again. 1 over f equals 2 over do, or do, do equals 2f. So the object is over here. And that should be backed up by our array tracing. It should be about the same height, so in parallel, out through the focal. Hey, look at that. And then straight through the center. I did a pretty good job. When it works out nice and neat like this, freehand, it just means I did a pretty good job eyeballing where F and 2F should be. But this all seems consistent. It's backed up by my, by my algebra here. So both of them are at 2F. Now, obviously, it's a lens. 
So one of them is on one side of the lens, the object, and then the image is on the other side, and it's flipped upside down. That's where that, uh, if we talked about the image height, that would be negative. Uh, the DI would be positive because it's a real image. Was there anything else? I think that was B and C. And it said express your answer in terms of the focal length, so I'm good because I'm allowed to have F in my answer. That's it.